Okay, welcome to the video. Sig Guy here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the trigger in your classic P series pistol. Today, I'm going to be working on a 229 double action single action. If you happen to be working on an SAO model, I'm going to show you how to remove the manual safety in that as well. There are several different variations of the trigger on the website, so make sure when you're ordering, read the descriptions. That way, you make sure you get the right trigger for the pistol you're installing it in. Also, on the website, I offer many different toolkits. This one here is for the classic P series. I have a toolkit for the 365, 320, and also a deluxe kit that covers all of those. In this kit, we got a special screwdriver and two different punches to help remove and install the pins in your classic P-Series pistol. So with that, let's get started. The first step when working on any firearm is to make sure it's clear and safe to work on. So we're going to remove our magazine. We're going to lock our slide to the rear. We're going to physically and visually check to make sure there's no round in the chamber, no magazine. Check our breech face, look away, do the same thing. Chamber, magazine, breech face. This pistol is clear and safe to work on. Next, we're going to rotate our takedown lever and remove our slide. And then we're going to remove the grip panels on both sides by removing these four screws. Now that both of our grip panels are removed, if our hammer is in the rearward position, we're going to want to release it. So we're going to hold it with our thumb and pull our trigger. That will relieve the tension on the components inside here that we're going to take apart later. Next, I'm going to remove my takedown lever. I'm going to press on it through the hole with my finger on this side while rotating it and twisting it and pulling it out the other side. Next, I'm going to remove the locking insert. To remove this, we pull it up and towards the front. I'm going to hold it on its side because there's a little spring on the side of it that is just resting on the side of it. This is for our um, slide catch. If it does happen to fall out, no big deal. It's just got one little hook on one side. It goes in this hole on this side here, and it just rests on the side of the locking insert like that. On models with a manual safety, we're going to remove the manual safety assembly. To do that, we just remove this cross bolt here. It goes through our frame and threads into this half of our manual safety. Just gonna hold that with my finger. I'm gonna use a 2.5 millimeter to remove the cross bolt. You do not remove the spring first. It looks like it's capturing that bolt, but it's not. So we're gonna remove our cross bolt. And use my magnet to remove our spring and then we'll remove this half of our manual safety lever and then we'll let the other half fall out. so as you can see there's a threaded hole on this half here that is what our cross bolt threads into next i'm going to remove my safety lever it's this lever right here it's captured by my sear pivot pin. Depending if your pistol has an SRT kit in it or not, sometimes those safety levers are extremely long. The longer ones make it more difficult to remove and install your trigger bar and your trigger as an assembly. By removing that safety lever, it makes that process much easier. All right, removing our safety lever and even changing out our sear spring is a very easy process if you have the right tools. That's why I put together uh, the toolkit that's available on my website. In the toolkit, you have a screwdriver with a notch in it. The screwdriver makes it very easy to remove and install the sear spring. The sear spring is captured underneath this post right here. So that's our first step. We're going to remove that sear spring from the post by capturing it with our screwdriver, prying it out to the side, and releasing the spring just like that. Next, we're going to use the smaller punch that's in the kit to remove the sear pivot pin. This is going to act as a slave pin. So once we push out our sear pivot pin, it's going to keep all these parts and pieces all lined up properly. So we'll set our pin to the side. The screwdriver in the kit also has a magnet on one end. So I'm going to pull out my punch just enough to where it's going to release my safety lever. So I'm going to grab my safety lever with the magnet. Going to pull out my punch just a little bit 
then pull the CPU lever up and out, just like that. Okay, and if I was going to change out my sear spring, now would be the time to do that. If I wanted to put a lighter sear spring in it, like the one provided in the uh, Ultimate Master Spring Tuning Kit by Armory Craft. It's got a factory one in here and a purple one in here. These are available on my website as well. Basically, I'm going to use the magnet again on my screwdriver. I'm going to hold on to that sear spring. I'm going to pull out my slave pin just enough to clear the sear spring. And I can pull that sear spring up and out. And then instead of using the magnet to install it, I would just hold it with my fingers. Slide it back down in there, the new one. Push my slave pin through until it captures the spring. And it's that easy. You do not need to disassemble all of these parts and pieces to quickly and easily change out your sear spring. Now that we have our safety lever removed, I'm going to install the factory sear pivot pin. So I'm going to use that to push my punch out. Make sure it's lined up properly. And then I'm going to use my screwdriver with the notch in it to reinstall our sear spring. That way nothing falls apart. I'm just going to use that screwdriver to push down on that spring. Put it underneath that post. Making sure it's under there all the way. That spring tension will prevent that pin from falling out. And then your sear and all that stuff from falling out as well. Next, I'm going to remove my trigger bar spring from my trigger bar. It's hooked on the end of the trigger bar here and on the frame on the other end. So I'm going to hold it upside down like this. I'm going to grab it with my fingers. You can use needle nose pliers. We're going to unhook it from the trigger bar by pulling it up and out. And then we'll rotate it and disconnect it from the frame. And our last step is to remove our trigger pivot pin. If it hasn't fallen out already, it's a really loose fit and a lot of times just tilting your pistol to the side like this falls out the side so if it hasn't just use the other punch in my kit to push that trigger pivot pin out just like that then we're going to remove the punch we'll remove our slide catch and then we'll remove the trigger and the trigger bar as an assembly there is a little ledge inside your frame right here. Sometimes the trigger bar does not want to clear that ledge or it's very difficult. When I do it, I push the trigger away from me, which brings the trigger bar towards me as I'm pushing up and out, just like that. And then we can remove the whole thing as an assembly. And then your trigger is just pivoting on a pin or your trigger has a pin on it going through a hole on the trigger bar. I'm going to be reinstalling the slightly curved Armored Craft dual adjustable trigger. We have adjustment screws for pre-travel and over-travel. As mentioned in the beginning of the video, there are several different variations of this trigger available depending on if you got double action, single action, or single action only. Single action only, there's two different types, type one and type two. One has the pin on the trigger, and the other one has a hole in the trigger. So just make sure you read the website descriptions carefully and look at the illustrations. And then that will help you decide on which trigger you need for the model pistol you're installing it in. There is also flat and slightly curved to choose from as well. Alright, just a quick side-by-side -side comparison before we install the Armory Craft trigger. We have the Armory Craft here on the left, the factory trigger on the right. And as you can see, the resting position between the two are very similar. Other competitors out there, they have some of their resting positions pretty far forward, which makes a smaller hole in the front of the trigger. So if you got big fingers or gloves on, it's harder to get your finger in there. So side by side with the line completely parallel, you can see the resting positions are very similar between the two. The first step in reassembly is going to be to reinstall the trigger and the trigger bar assembly into the frame. So what I would do is put a little dab of grease or whatever lubricant you're using on the pivot pin here before we install it to the trigger, just like so. And then in my opinion, this is the trickiest part of the whole process is getting this assembly back in, but with the safety lever removed, it makes it a lot easier. So you have to have this assembled in order to put it in. You cannot do it one piece at a time. I've tried. Um, so I'm gonna take the rear part of my trigger bar 
and get it by my sear and get it started in there just like that. Then we're going to rotate our trigger and put it through the trigger opening in the frame like that. And then we're just going to kind of slide the whole thing right down inside there. As you can see, my trigger bar went under that little shelf and it's resting in pretty close to where it needs to be. The next step is to reinstall our trigger pivot pin. So I'm going to use my punch as a slave pin again. I'm going to put it right through the frame, through the trigger, just like that. This is our trigger pivot pin. This only goes in one way. There's a slot on one end. It's flush on the other end. So we want the slot facing towards us. Then there's two notches in it as well. One on each end. Those go in the 7 o'clock position with that slot parallel to the frame. These little notches in the bottom aren't crucial right yet. It's when you put in your locking insert that we got to make sure that those are in the 7 o'clock position. Okay. So I'm going to use the factory pin to push out the punch. Then I'm going to use the punch to push the pin in a little bit more so I can see half of it sticking out of the trigger there. I'm going to take my slide catch and I'm going to put it over the pin and then use my finger right here to push the pin back through the frame right here. And now it's capturing my slide catch. And we'll just let that fall down into position right there. The next step is going to be to reinstall our trigger bar spring. Our trigger bar spring has two different hooks. One is a more pronounced hook, which goes on our trigger bar. And the other one's more like a little leg that goes into our frame. So I find this easier and you're going to want to kind of hold your pivot pin too so that doesn't fall out of your trigger because sometimes they're very loose fit like we mentioned earlier. So I find it easiest to hold it upside down like this and actually put my finger in behind my trigger while I'm holding my trigger pivot pin as well. And what this does is it prevents the trigger bar from moving forward when you're trying to hook onto it. So I'm going to take my trigger bar spring, put it through the hole in the frame right there. Just like that. And then you can either use needle nose pliers or your fingers to hook the trigger bar spring onto the trigger bar just like that. Very important that you hook the trigger bar spring into this little notch right here. Not on the back side of your trigger bar because sometimes it will hook onto there and it looks like it's proper, but it's not. Your trigger won't function properly if you don't have that hook in the right place. Okay. Next, we're going to reinstall our safety lever. And as you can see, this is pretty long. The ones with the SRT kit are extremely long. Without the SRT, they're probably about that long right there. So because this is so long, it makes it very difficult to get that trigger bar by it. Um, so it's just a good idea. To, it's pretty easy to get rid of this right out of the gate. That way you don't have any problems removing and installing your trigger bar. So first we're going to use our special screwdriver again to remove our sear spring from the post. Just like that. And then we're going to use our smaller punch as a slave pin again. We're going to push out our sear pivot pin like that. We'll set that aside. Next we're going to remove our punch just a little bit. You can see the silver part of my punch in between my sear and the frame right here. We're going to just keep pulling that out until the punch is clear of that gap just like that. Then we'll grab our safety lever. As you grab it like this by the top you can try needle nose or a magnet or whatever you find most useful. I slide it into that gap and then I push my sear, excuse me, my punch against it. See it's kind of just staying there by itself. As I'm putting pressure on it, I'm sliding that down and then you're going to feel when the hole of the safety lever, the pin goes through it because my punch actually just moved towards the right. And then we're just going to kind of move it around until it goes all the way through. Next, we'll take our sear pivot pin and we'll use it to push our slave pin out, just like that. 
I'm going to make sure everything's lined up. That pin should be recessed on both sides. So that way when your slide is installed and it comes back, it doesn't hit that pin. Okay. And then I'm going to use my screwdriver to reattach my sear spring onto that post. Just like that. Next, we're going to reinstall our manual safety assembly if you're working on a uh, pistol that has the manual safety. Half of it has the threaded hole, like we talked about in the beginning here. And then it's got this big pin here. That big pin goes into this big hole. Okay. And then we'll rest it on its side just like that. And you want this pushed all the way down, not up, down. That way the cross bolt will clear our trigger bar. So I'm going to hold it just like that with my finger. And as you can see, we can see the threaded hole through the frame right there. We're going to take our other half and install it the same way, pushing it down just like that. We're going to take our little spring. We're going to put it over the post just like that. And then we lined up that groove for the U-shaped portion of the spring with the hole that the cross bolt's going to go through. And we'll slide our cross bolt into the hole. Push it all the way through. I can feel it hitting the back side, the threaded portion of the manual safety. And then we're just going to screw that in with our 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. And we'll do a quick function check works properly okay and we are on the home stretch next we're going to install our locking insert and our takedown lever so now we need to make sure that our trigger pivot pin is in the proper position so if you take the small flat tip that comes in the kit you can actually use it as a screwdriver and rotate that pin and when i rotate that pin i can see those notches in that pin and we need to make sure that those are facing down and then our pin is parallel with the top of our slide that'll put those notches at about seven o'clock we need to make sure our pin is flush on both sides and then we need to make sure that our slide catch is all the way against the side of the frame if it's in here like this our locking insert is not going to go in okay Make sure it's all the way against the side. Sometimes if you hold it with your finger, just like that, or I actually hold it like this with my finger, I'm pushing against the frame here. Also make sure your hammer is forward if for some reason you pulled it back. So our locking insert has this groove right here. That's gonna slide down over our trigger pivot pin. And those notches facing down are gonna go allow this to slide right in over that okay so just kind of line everything up like that and drop it down inside next we'll reinstall our takedown lever now you can see your little slide catch spring right there in the hole your takedown lever has a little notch cut into it this aids in reassembly so we're going to use that notch to go over the spring see how my notches in the bottom it's going to go over the spring just like that and then when you rotate the takedown lever it's going to push that spring down and allow for your takedown lever to slide in so we'll rotate it as we're pushing in just like that and then we'll line up going through the second part of the locking insert there and rotate it some more just like that next we'll reinstall our grip panels And reinstall our slide in my opinion the most important step when working on firearms is to perform a functions check at the very end that ensures that your pistol or firearm is working properly before you return it to service so we're gonna do that really quick right now uh, we're gonna be pulling the trigger several times so we're gonna make sure we are working on a clear safe firearm still so we're gonna physically and visually check to make sure there's no round in the chamber no magazine check our breech face Look away, do the same thing again, chamber, magazine, breech face. We are clear and safe. 
So I'm going to release my slide, pull my trigger, and I'm going to install a magazine. I'm going to make sure the magazine falls out every single time under its own weight. That way if we changed out our mag release or did something in here to disturb that, we know that that's functioning properly. Next we're going to rack our slide to the rear. The faller on the magazine should push up on our slide catch, making it go into this notch here, locking our slide to the rear. So we're going to do that. Slide catch moves up, locks it to the rear. That's working properly. Now we can remove our magazine, release our slide. We're going to be pulling our trigger, so make sure the muzzle is in a safe direction. We're going to ensure that the pistol fires. Pistol fires. Holding it to the rear, we're going to rack our slide. We're going to uh, test our reset. Pistol resets. Pistol fires. We're going to rack it one more time. Now we're going to pull our slide back so it's out of battery, not covering the muzzle with our hand. We're going to test to see if the trigger fires or not. It should not fire. It does not fire. Release our slide. Fires. So this pistol is working properly and we can return it to service. Next I'm going to show you how to properly adjust your dual adjustable trigger. The adjustment screws are located under our locking insert so we need to remove our locking insert to get access to them. So we're going to rotate our takedown lever, remove our slide, remove our takedown lever, and remove our locking insert. This is one of our adjustment screws here. And the other adjustment screw is behind the trigger right here. Armory Craft does provide an Allen wrench with their trigger. It is much easier, in my opinion, to use a longer Allen wrench to make the adjustment on that screw. All right, before making any adjustments on your screws, you're going to remove that particular screw all the way, clean it off thoroughly with some denatured alcohol or something, um, get all that assembly lube off of it, Apply a light coat of blue Loctite, even though it's in a red bottle, this is blue Loctite. And then reinstall that screw into the hole, being careful not to strip the screw or the hole. Uh, warranty does not cover strip screws or stripped holes due to user installation error. Okay, so now we're going to make the adjustments. We'll do this in two steps, the over-travel screw and then the pre-travel screw. So I've basically taken out my over-travel screw, I've cleaned it off, I've put Loctite on it and I've put it back in the hole. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread that screw in almost all the way. I don't want to go too far because it's going to fall outside the hole, but I can see quite a bit of it sticking out the front of my hole right here. Okay. So when I pull my hammer back, I'm going to hold my hammer with my thumb and pull my trigger. Basically, my hammer will not release, and that's because that's over-adjusted on purpose right now. So I'm going to hold my hammer with my thumb, I'm going to pull my trigger and I'm going to back that screw out until it releases the hammer. Okay. Just like that. And I'll see if I can go in a little bit with it. See? We're right on the edge of it, releasing and not releasing. So. You might not want to over adjust it that much. You might want to give yourself a little bit of play, a little bit of tolerance in there. Um, and that's how you adjust the over travel screw. Next, we'll do the pre travel screw. Okay, our pre travel screw, not as easy to adjust as our over travel screw, but basically, this pre travel right here, we're going to get rid of as much as that as we want. So, in order to adjust that screw, we're going to pull our hammer back, pull our trigger back, and I'll show you where the screw is. You can see it right there in the top of the trigger. So I'm going to use my long Allen wrench or the one provided by Armory Craft. Stick it right in that hole. And then on the front side of our trigger, right here, you'll see the tip of the screw coming through as I'm tightening Tightening that screw up. Okay. The tip of that screw is going to interact with the front of our frame right here. And that's what removes our pre travel. 
So right now, my trigger did not reset, so it is over adjusted. So I'm basically going to back that screw out until you hear my trigger click. That is the reset, and then that'll be the proper adjustment for that screw. So I'll pull the hammer back, pull the trigger back, get on that screw again. Back it out. That's one turn. Trigger still didn't reset. You're going to hear a click when it resets. It won't go all the way forward. Like when I pull my hammer back a little bit, there it reset. So we're trying to get that to reset on its own. Right now it's still over adjusted. So I'm going to pull my hammer back, pull my trigger back. Give this another probably half a turn. Release my hammer. Uh, just reset, but barely. There you go. I'm going to come out just another little hair. There you go. You can actually go in just a hair. You can remove as much as you want. It's hammer fired, so it's not the same as a striker fired pistol. You can remove all of that pre-travel and not have any problems at all. Okay. There you go. There's no pre-travel at all. Pull our hammer back. Fire it. Resets. And there you go. That is how you make the adjustments to the pre-travel and over-travel screws on the Armorcraft dual adjustable trigger. Okay, and there you go. That's how you install and adjust the Armory Craft dual adjustable trigger in the classic P-Series pistol. You're going to want to also let this set overnight for at least 24 hours anyway to allow that Loctite time to dry so them adjustment screws don't move on you. If you haven't liked or subscribed to my YouTube channel, there should be a button right down here in the corner. If you could smash that baby, I'd really appreciate it. As always, thank you for watching and have a good day.